So, so far, we mostly talked about supervised learning, right? So there's different kinds of machine learning. There's uh, supervised learning, which is what we've looked at so far. Uh, specifically, we've looked at regression and classification. And both of these have the flavor of there is some output given some input. And uh, if you view the output as in the data as quote unquote the right answer for some input, then what we have been doing is, is constructing some kind of a function that takes us from inputs to outputs, which may be uh, some continuous uh, vectors in the case of uh, regression or uh, potentially discrete categories uh, in the case of uh, classification. Okay, so that's supervised learning. It's called supervised learning. Um, and then there is unsupervised learning, which is what we're going to do today. And there is no notion of inputs or outputs here. We just have some data. And the goal is to find some interesting patterns in the data where interesting is in quotes. So uh, it, whatever it means to the researcher, um, broadly speaking, uh, because it is so vague, uh, in general, there is no right answer um, unless we specifically specify uh, what kind of patterns we are seeking. Okay, So unsupervised learning is just you just have a bunch of data and you're looking for some, some kind of pattern and we'll see a couple of kinds of unsupervised learning today. And then the third kind of uh, machine learning, um, among perhaps many more, but these are the three main categories, um, is reinforcement learning. And this is something that we will um, talk about over the last three lectures of the course. Uh, reinforcement learning, an example of that is having um, a robot or a machine or more generally an agent trying to get better by interacting with the goal. Uh, better uh, by some goal or criteria that uh, the agent has, I suppose, okay? So that would be called reinforcement learning. Um, and like I said, we will talk about that in more detail over the next couple of lectures. Okay, so let's jump into unsupervised learning. There's lots and lots of varieties of unsupervised learning. Um, we will consider primarily two types of unsupervised learning. One is called clustering. Another is called dimensionality reduction. Okay. These are broad terms and then there are specific methods to do clustering uh, to do dimensionality reduction. So to demonstrate clustering, let me um, run this little program here, just made up some data here. Um, okay, so I just made up some data. Uh, image, oops. Um, let me comment this out. There's a pause here. Okay. Um, this looks more like it. Um, imagine you're doing blood tests on a thousand people or something, and you measure various parameters on the blood blood test, and maybe you plot one parameter versus some other parameter, and maybe in the thousand people, you find um, the parameters, two parameters, or perhaps many more parameters distributed in this, in this manner, okay? So a whole bunch of people have parameters in this regime, a whole bunch of people have parameters in this regime, for instance, okay? Um, for instance, this could be some kind of a test that distinguishes people having some kind of, let's say, um, disease, uh, and, and uh, uh, we are perha perhaps these two clusters, uh, and I use the word clusters already, these two clusters uh, distinguish between people that have the disease and not, for instance. Um, okay, so it could be uh, something like this, where there are different kinds of people, perhaps, uh, with, with different physiologies and so on. It could be one big blob, but it might also be possible that there are uh, clusters where there are systematic differences. Um, okay, 
Um, another example um, that uh, made up with the exact same data, just changed the uh, uh, axes here. Um, imagine uh, there's the, uh, we are plotting two variables, uh, attributes of a car. Uh, let's say uh, on the x-axis is maximum power of a car, acceleration, let's say, max acceleration of a car in some units. And then let's say on the y-axis, we have fuel efficiency of a car. And it's possible uh, that uh, cars that have a lot of acceleration uh, or have lower fuel efficiency. I'm not saying that is a rule, but it's possible. Uh, and perhaps uh, there is not a whole range of cars between these two extremes. Uh, maybe there are some people that uh, like fuel efficient cars that don't necessarily have a lot of power and vice versa, uh, a lot of power, but perhaps don't uh, have a lot of fuel efficiency. So if that is the case, that people have those somewhat distinct preferences, and maybe it's hard to engineer cars that have both, uh, then perhaps people would, um, or at least the cars on the market would uh, split into these clusters uh, that uh, have um, that sort of cluster around here and maybe cluster around here. Again, completely made up data, this need not necessarily be true, uh, but just to give you some uh, intuition for, uh, or motivation for the existence potentially of clusters uh, in data. We are not saying one is the input or one is the output. We are not saying necessarily that we are trying to predict fuel efficiency uh, based on the accelerations or anything like that. We're just observing data and perhaps discovering clusters. Like I said, this is just made up data, okay? Um, and I made up another kind of data with uh, three clusters. Again, this is completely uh, made up. Uh, it's not meant to be a commentary on <laughs> society or any means. Um, I just made up two dimensions for uh, people. I don't know, interest in engineering, interest in writing poems. Maybe there are three clusters. Uh, maybe people that are interested in poems, maybe there are people that are interested in engineering, and maybe there are people that are interested in both. Uh, I don't know. Of course, like again, these need not be clusters, but maybe there are clusters, right? So, um, um, uh, one reason for clusters to arise is uh, if, if there is uh, sort of a positive feedback system. Uh, once you express interest in engineering, potentially people encourage you and uh, you become more interested in engineering, perhaps to the exclusion of uh, being interested in uh, poems. Just made up. Okay. Anyway, so it's conceivable that data has clusters, and if there is clusters like this, it would be interesting to determine or uh, discover the existence of, of these clusters. Okay. So that's the idea um, of the first unsupervised learning uh, concept that we are going to discover um, discuss, uh, which is clustering. Right. So imagine we have uh, multiple clusters. Uh, how do we um, uh, identify the existence of these clusters and how do we um, assign different data points uh, to each cluster, okay? So in this case, each point is a, is a car uh, and the other two cases, each point was a person. Okay, so um, clustering, unsupervised learning, where we uh, see if we can reasonably divide the data into k clusters, okay, k being greater than or equal to 2. If k is equal to 1, we just have one single large cluster, but you can imagine 2, 3, 4, 20, 50, 100, how many of our clusters. We can imagine two kinds of clustering problems, one in which we know somehow beforehand um, what the k uh, what k is, what, how many clusters we are trying to discover. So k is given or fixed, let's say we, are, we know that, that there are somehow, or we want to divide uh, the data into five groups, let's say, and we just fix k, and then we can also imagine uh, a situation where k is unknown and we are trying to determine the optimal number of clusters. Okay. Uh, we are primarily going to look at this. 
Uh, it turns out that there is no objective way of determining these uh, because in principle you can, uh, for most objectives, uh, you can uh, create more and more um, clusters and it's usually better and better for, for more kinds of metrics, but, uh, but one can imagine some, I suppose, made up metrics to try to determine um, uh, the optimal number of clusters based on some criterion. Okay. We might come back to this later. Um, okay, so the first algorithm um, or, or um, let's say criterion for clustering, the most common one is called k-means clustering. It's just one of many methods for clustering. Uh, here's the idea. Say we have n data points, p1, p2, etc. to pn. Uh, K means clustering tries to break up the n data points into k sets, k different sets. Like we said, k could be two, three, four, whatever. Um, into k sets such that, again, like we said, most of machine learning is optimization. Here we are trying to minimize this quantity. What is this quantity? Um, so the thing inside the bracket, so it's summation, the point minus mu i square, sum over each set, okay? Uh, and then summed over all sets. So I is uh, uh, iterating over all sets. I goes from one to K, and then J goes uh, from one to how many ever data points there are in each set. There are K different sets. Um, okay, so this quantity uh, is the following. First of all, what is this quantity, mu i? mu i is the mean, is defined as the mean of all the data points in a particular set, okay? So imagine you have two sets. Um, the data points in the first set have a mean, mu one. And the data points in the second set have a mean, mu two, okay? And so on and so forth. Um, so that's mu i. Um, and pj minus mu i is the distance or, or the difference between the data point and, and the mu and, and the mean of the set it belongs to, of that data point that belongs to. Um, and you basically do some squared error uh, or scrum squared distance of um, all the data points from the mean of that um, set, okay? So that's the sum squared distance. And then, so that's for each set. You, for each set, you find the sum squared distance from the mean. Um, and then you sum over, sum that over all the sets, okay? Um, and you try to um, minimize this. So it's like, um, so that you're sort of trying to find uh, or divide things into different sets in a manner that the points in a particular set are relatively close to a, uh, uh, to its mean, points in a different set are relatively close to its own mean, points in a different set are relatively close to its own mean and so on. So we are sort of um, minimizing the distance from the mean for each set, kind of, but not really because we are basically summing over all the sets of the distance from the mean uh, of uh, the data points in each set. Okay, so that's this quantity. So that's the intuition for this quantity. What are the unknowns in this optimization? It's a bit weird. The unknowns in this optimization are uh, actually which data point belongs to which set, okay? So it's this set membership that is the unknown, okay? So data point number one, does it belong to the first set, second set, third set, these sets are what we call clusters, right? So these sets are the clusters. The unknowns are, do we assign the first data point to the first cluster or the second cluster or the third cluster and so on, okay? That's the idea. And, and here I, I talk about, okay, this is proportional to the variance of the set SI scaled by the number of data points in SI, it doesn't matter. We've already talked about what this quantity means. Um, so how would you uh, 
potentially um, assign different data points to different clusters. What might an algorithm for that look like? Okay, uh, an algorithm for that might look like the following: um, you have, let's say, hundred data points, for instance, n data points. You just randomly, and, and let's say you want five clusters. Okay, let's say you're looking for dividing the 100 data points into five clusters. You just randomly take uh, all the data points and assign them to each of five different clusters. Let's say 20 points in cluster one, 20 points in cluster two, 20 points in cluster three, four, and five, um, randomly assigned with no initial sort of criteria. Um, so you do that. And then for each of these five sets, we can compute the mean of the five sets, okay? Now that you've computed the mean, you can actually compute the distance uh, of each data point of, of the whole data set uh, from all the means, okay? From, from the five different means. And then let's say that the, the data points that are closest to mean number one, let's say the 20 highest data points that are closest to mean number one, you assign to set one, set two, set three, set four, set five, uh, maybe not the 20 highest, but using some criteria for cutoff, you divide all the points into the five sets now. Now the five sets will have a new set of points, right? Um, again, you can compute the means of all those points, uh, and then you can again compute the distance of all the points um, to, um, the uh, individual means uh, and sort of redo that, okay? Um, ideally, uh, sort of determining, um, uh, sort of updating the membership of each, each set, you should take into account uh, this particular uh, criterion if you wanna be rigorous about it. Okay, so that's roughly a, a way to think about how you would sort of build, build an algorithm, okay? Um, you change the membership of each set based on how close each data point is to the means of uh, mu i, okay? Um, this may not do example exactly k-means, uh, but uh, uh, you can sort of think about um, or try to implement this algorithm and see if it, if it agrees with uh, k-means, okay? And when I say this algorithm, we haven't exactly specified the algorithm, just provided some kind of intuition about how you might sort of update uh, the sets. Okay. Um, now let's look at a MATLAB example quickly um, to see uh, how this uh, k-means would be implemented. 